again. Okay, so we're we're holding the Dharm Daf Yud Beis, and before we begin, I just wanted to say two points of introduction. Number one, here's the pasuk in Chumash where it says, "Ish kiyder neder Lashem. A man makes a neder to Hashem. Now you know how to make a neder by saying, "This piece of meat should be usher to me." That makes it simple. What happens? If you say this piece of meat should be usher to me like a carbon, right? So then you're not saying that's, you didn't say it's usher to me. You should say this piece of meat is a carbon to me. You didn't say the word usher. So then, since you said that the piece of meat should be a carbon, and a carbon is something that became usher through a bow, normally, a carbon, what a sacrifice is, that you take an animal and you say, this I'm going to bring as a sacrifice. That makes the animal holy, and you have to bring it as a sacrifice. So when you say that my food should be like that animal, is basically you're saying my food should be uh, latched on and should have the same halachas and dinim like that animal. And therefore, that piece of food becomes usher to you, that you connected that food to that animal, that becomes usher. L- listen, the, 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 here's an important point. That's why the Pasuk says, Ish kiyidor neder, Lashem. If you latch something on to something that was a neder to Hashem, you latched your piece of food, whatever it is, a piece of cake, to something that was a neder to Hashem. You said it should be like this carbon, then you become also to eat that piece of cake. Okay. But what happens, let's say I say, I'm throwing this out there. What happens if I say to you, um, if a person said, let my piece of cake I want it to be like a piece of chazer. Is that a neder? No, because a piece of chazer is something the Abishta made usher. It's not a human that made it usher. It's Abishta made it usher. And so therefore it's not a neder that made it usher. It's the Torah that made it usher. Therefore, that is not a valid neder. Okay, I'm just saying. Hi, Sheldon. Hi, Bernie. Hi, we just began, and we just just we just said that um, that if you would say a piece of cake should be like a piece of chazir, then the, the piece of cake does not become usher to you, because the chazir was made Hakadosh Baruch Hu made chazir usher, and therefore if you say my piece of cake should be like chazir, you're permitted to eat the cake. It's only if you say that my piece of cake should be like a, a sacrificial animal a carbon animal, where a human made that animal kadosh, then that, that piece of cake becomes usher. Okay, that's what we said so far. The other point I want to bring out to you, the other point I want to bring out to you is, is this. Okay, we know, I'm just saying like this. Let's say a person made a nether for a shlomim, right? We hear in my screen over here. He made this animal, I want to bring it as a carbon shlomim. A carbon shlomim means you slaughter the animal, and you give some of the meat to the to, to the Mizbeach, a present to the Kohen, and you eat the rest in Jerusalem. So that's a vow. As long as it's still an animal, nobody is a lot of benefit from that because that animal is waiting to be sacrificed. So it's usher. Nobody can benefit from that animal. Once after the blood is sprinkling and it's slaughtered, then it becomes a piece of meat. It, the animal, that food, that piece of meat becomes permitted to eat. In fact, you're supposed to eat it in Jerusalem. Let's say, here's my picture of aged meat. You, you left it over. You, you didn't eat it in time. You left it for two, three days in your refrigerator. It becomes nicer. Then that piece of meat becomes usher. Okay? So a typical animal, carbon animal, will go through three stages. Usher, then permitted, and then it becomes usher if, if you still have it after a few days. Okay? That's all you need to know. So, so let's go into the Gemara. The Gemara will start from the Afyur Allah from the base. From the from the about well, six lines from the bottom. Let's put a figure and it's gonna be one, two, three. Boy Rab Yirmiya. Rab Yirmiya had a question. Boy Rami Bachama, sorry. Rami Bachama asked an, a, a question. A guy said, mahu. If a man said, I want my piece of cake, we're gonna use an example of piece of cake. He said, This piece of cake should be like the meat of a shlomim after the blood was sprinkled. So he wants his piece of meat. To take on the halachos of the of this piece of meat that after the blood was sprinkled, 
Well, after the blood is sprinkled, it's permitted, right? So the Gemara, the Gemara asked the question, Mahu, what would be the case of that case? So the Gemara says, what do you mean? What's the problem with that? If he said those exact words, my piece of cake should be like the meat of a shlomim after you sprinkle the blood. Well, the meat of a shlomim after you sprinkle the blood, you're supposed to take it back to your hotel in Jerusalem and eat it. That's saying that uh, my piece of meat should be like, uh, my piece of cake should be like uh, like another heter food. So of course he's permitted to eat that his cake because he's, 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 he's connecting it to uh, something that's permitted to eat. So the Gemara says, no. Ella, kugoin, let's ex- ma- imagine this in your mind. He has a piece of meat that's shlomim meat, which you could eat. Okay, fine. And it's right in front of him. And then there's hetter food in front of him. Let's say another piece of meat that was permitted to eat. So you have a shlomim meat and a hetter meat right in front of him. And he said, he said, my hetter meat should be like this meat. My, what's the din? Here we can have a question. That hetter meat of shlomim at one time was usher. Why? Because remember, every 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 hetter meat after the sprinkling bun originally was usher when it was an animal. So what did the guy mean? Was he saying that that this hetter meat should go back to the source of that shlomim? And the source of the shlomim was a whole animal, which means it was usher. Oi. Or maybe the hetero kamakis. He's trying to uh, latch onto when the piece of meat was slaughtered and it was permitted. And he's saying that my uh, regular piece of meat should be like this piece of meat, just like the shlomim meat I can eat now. I can eat this meat. I can also eat that meat. In other words, so what did he mean? Uh, we again, even if he would say, "I, I was thinking, oh, sir, it doesn't matter," because. We have to have, the language has to match up in the Dharm. If your language doesn't indicate a nether, it's not usr. So a guy who said that this piece of meat, my heter meat, should be like the shlomim meat that's right in front of me, I could say, well, this shlomim meat, the source of the shlomim meat was an isr. At one time, this was an usr piece of meat, in fact, when it was a whole animal. So maybe he's trying to say, my heter piece of meat should be usr just like this animal was once usher. Or maybe he's saying, but right now I can eat this piece of meat, this shlomim meat. So he means that my heter meat should be like a permitted piece of meat. So is this a nether or not? Omar Rava, Rava said, Toshima, come in here. Our Mishnah said, noisar. Let's just examine the word noisar. If a person has a piece of meat of noisar, upigal, and the Mishnah says, if I said that my food should be like noisar, it's usher. Wait a second. We go now to your base of noisar What is noisar? Noisar is the leftover meat. And this came at this point, way after the sprinkling of the blood. It was usr. So, but at one right the step before noisar, it was a permitted piece of meat. But nevertheless, when a person says my piece of meat should be like this noisar piece of meat, he's saying that the, the piece of meat is usr. Because we go what the piece of meat is right now, not this where it was before. So that's what the Gemara is gonna say. Noisar la zrikas dominu. Noisar is after Zrikas Domin. And then and nevertheless, you said if my piece of meat should be like the Noisar, it's an usr, it's a nether, and we don't say no. Why don't we say that when he's he when he's latched on his nether to that to that noisar, he meant the noisar prior to becoming noisar, when it was still a permitted piece of meat. So uh, so must be that you don't look at where it comes from. You look at the piece of meat, where it is at this situation when you said the nether. So we see from here, that you're always thinking about it, where it is at this moment. At this moment, this noisar is also a piece of meat. So when you connect, when you're latching on, or matvis, the heter piece of meat, onto the to this nicer piece of meat, the hetter becomes also because you look at the nicer piece of meat where it is now. The nicer you can't eat, so therefore the hetter you can't eat. And we don't look at where was the step before. So that should be resolved. Rabbi Bahamas question. Do you go after Rabbi Bahamas says 
Do you go after mi'ikare konakis? Do you look at where it comes from? Or do you look at it where it is now? And that's the question. So that was the question. So we have a pretty perfect solution that from the Mishnah. Answers the Gemara, Omale Rav Hunu Bered Rav Nasan. Rav Hunu, son of Rav Nasan, answered, Benoise Shel Oila. It's talking about a Noise Shel Oila. So what does that mean? It means it's talking about, let's say, a, a neder. If a person tries to make a carbon oila, in this is scenario on the screen, so right away it's usher when it's an animal. Even after you sprinkle it, it's also usher because the, an oila is an animal that you slaughter and you have to throw the whole thing onto the mizbeach. And then when it's noiser, it's usher. So it never had a, even in the step prior to it becoming noiser, it was usher. So that's why that piece of meat was usher. In our Mishnah, when it says, if you're matvis on a piece of noisar, it'll always remain osar, is because we're talking about a noisar of a carbon oila that never had a moment of hetam. That's what he's saying over here. And for Tzagumara, our Mishnah is talking about a noisar of a carbon oila, which never had a moment that it became a uh, hetar. So, so Rami Bahama said, in Cain, listen to Bifsar Oila. Why does our Mishnah say that if your matvis with Noisar, that's when your nether takes effect? If we're talking about an Oila, even before it becomes Noisar, you could also say uh, a matvis in this piece of meat, prior, even prior to becoming Noisar, it's still also because we're dealing with the carbon Oila, right? And, and, and after, even after sprinkling over here, uh, a carbon oiler is osir. So why does the Mishra say that only if a matfis, when it became noiser, it becomes osir, even if a matfis, uh, to the, if I connect it to a piece of meat after the sprinkling, it'll also be osir. So the Gemara says that the Mishnah is doesn't have to tell you that. Loi mi baya Loi mi baya doesn't have to tell you that mi basar oiler do osir. When you matfis, and that's a good word. You have to know that word. That matvis means I'm latching on. I'm saying this piece of meat that I have should be like that piece of meat. So no matter what, if you say this heter meat should be like the oiler meat, certainly it's usar. Why? Because every oiler meat is supposed to be thrown on the mezbeh. You can't eat it. The a carbon matvis. Your matvis in the carbon. And therefore, that for sure makes it usar. But noisa upigal the oiler certainly. But even if, 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 let's say you didn't put it on the mezbeh, and you left it off the mezbeah, and now it's noisar, it's leftovers, I still need it to teach me that even if you matvis in noisar, your nether is, your food becomes osar, and it's a good hatfasa. Why? Sal kedaitich amina, I would have thought, ki isa noisar, ki isa pigel, that when you meant to say noisar, you didn't mean to say this piece of meat, I'm latching on to this piece of meat, I'm latching on to the Torah's prohibition of noisar. And therefore, who made the prohibition of Nosar? God made the prohibition of Nosar. So it's almost like as if you're, you're latching on to a piece of Chazer. You're saying, my kosher piece of meat should be like Chazer piece of meat. Well, that we said before in the introduction, that that's not a nether. So therefore, when you're going to say your piece of meat should be like this Nosar oil of meat, maybe you're saying my piece of meat should be like the God prohibition of Nosar and not particularly this piece of meat. And therefore, the Havalei Kimat Vis Bedavar Asr, you're, you're latching on to something that was also through God, not through your Aneder, the Loi Mitzar, and your piece of meat would not become Asr. Kamash Malan, that's the novelty of the Mishnah. That when I say my piece of meat should be like this nicer piece of meat, even though this nicer piece of meat is, is became Asr, because at one time, in order for it to become an Oila, it had to be, somebody had to make a vow on that animal. Then they slaughtered the animal. Then they sprinkled the blood on the Mizbeach. And then they didn't bring the animal onto the Mizbeach, so it became Nysa. So the, the whole thing was one big Dover Hanadir, something that became also through a vow. And therefore, I could do Hatfasa on even the Nysa part of an Oila, and it'll still be a good nether. New, new, new question. Again, again, and think about it this way. If you have a choice, a choice, a 50-50 choice of something that's mutter now, but came from Asr, it came from Asr, and you're matvisit, does the guy mean to matvisit from where it came from? That's called be'ikare kamatvis, 
Or does he mean to matvis or latch on to where it is now? And if right now I could eat it, then my nether is not a good nether because I'm latching on to the piece of meat where it is right now and it's permitted to eat. Here's a good example, and you'll see how this all plays out. Let, let's 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 uh, put it up on the screen again. Um, here, a guy made a guy when his father died, he fasted. Okay, let's say his father died in year two thousand one, and his minig was he fasted the day his father died. All the years of the yard site, he ate. Right, two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand four. He was eating on his father's yard site. Comes two thousand and six. And he says, he says that I want this day to be like the yard site day. What did he mean to say? Did he mean to say that the, it should be like the yard site days that I eat? Or does he mean to day, say like the original yard site, the original day of death, which was like he, which was the day he fasted on? So Gemara, the Mishnah says, no, the, the Bryce says that he's not permitted to eat on that day. So it seems to imply that you, you go to the source to the original day when he fasted, even though subsequently is on the yard site he was eating, when he says on the year 2006, I want this day to be like the day my father died, well, he meant like the original day his father died when he fasted. So it's a clear idea that you always go to the original source. That's what the Gemara is going to bring. Let's give, let's give an example. What's example of being matvis by something that's that was made through a vow, and that will make a nether, according to the Torah. Omar, he said, a guy said, I'm not going to eat meat, I'm not going to drink wine, like the day my, my father died. Okay, the original day that his father died, he fasted. Subsequent years, he did not fast. Okay, that's clear. Or the day like my rabbi died. So the day that his rabbi died, the original year that his rabbi died, he fasted. Subsequent years, he did not fast. The day that Gedalia ben Achikam was killed. Okay, he wants this day to be like the fast day that he always fasts on on the day that uh, on the third, right after a shana, the day when the Gedalia ben Achikam, which is a public fast, and he made he made uh, neder on that day. That he's not going to fast, even though it's even you know supposed to not fast midraban, and he made a nether. I'm not. I'm fasting that day, or he says my day should be the day that I'm right now. I'm not eating meat. Should be like the day kiyom shiri isi yerushalayim berchubana. The first time I saw Jerusalem destroyed. In other words, the first time you come to Jerusalem uh, and you're seeing that the base of Migdish is not being built, you're supposed to fast that day. Over time, if you see it all, if it's not the first time you saw it, you don't have to fast. So he said that my today, I'm not eating meat and drinking wine like that original day. So then you ask sir, okay, Shmuel, and Shmuel explained, it's the day of the same day of the yard site. In other words, it's the exact same day of the yard site, maybe the way it came out originally. Then you become Asr. So again, in the picture we see that if a guy in 2006 is mamish the same day in the same time of year, the same day of the yard site, he says, "I want today to be like the day of the like the day of the yard site." So what did he mean? He mean he meant like the original time of the first yard site, which is the first time that his father died, and he fasted, even though he subsequently ate in, in the following years. So hey Khadami, what's the case? Lav Kokoi the Koi, we're talking about a case, the Koi Bhad Bishabus, the Mispe Abia. We're going on that Sunday and the same, you know, yard site day, let's say it's the first of Nisan, that his father died. It's the same Sunday, the same day. And right now, a number of years later, he wants to say that I'm not eating meat, I'm not drinking wine like the day that my father died. Ba'afagab, that's the point here. The Ika Tulu Khad Shabbos or the Hatera. Even though in between all those years, right now, he ate on his father's yard side. Ukutani, but nevertheless, also, in the Kutani, when, he, when he says it on the, the year 2006, it, the, the Bryce says that day, since you said today should be like that day, of the day that my father died, you're not allowed to eat meat or drink wine that day. 
Shmamina, from here we see the Iker Kamakvis, you go at the source, the original source. And the original first time that his father died, that day he didn't eat. Even though in subsequently years he did eat. So, but when he says one uh, on, on a on a sub on a next yard site, he says, Today I want it to be like the day like my father died. We assume that he meant the original source when the, when his father died, he didn't eat meat and drink wine, even though in all the years after that. He ate, drank, ate meat and drank wine. So we see from there, the Ikare Kamatvis, we go after the original source, even though in all the years he didn't eat. And says the Gemara, the Shmuel Hachi Itmar. This is Shmuel, you have to mistake Shmuel. Shmuel explained the Braisa, Amma Shmuel, Shmuel, that means that Shmuel is talking about, Shmuel is talking about right over here. He's talking about all the years he fasted. He fasted every year, so in all the subsequent years. And then on, this, on 2006, he said, I want my day to be like the day of my father's death. So since in all the years he's been fasting on his father's yard site, on this father's yard site, he's not permitted to eat. So what's the novelty of that? So what's the novelty of that uh, statement? So it's not such a novelty in that statement. The Gemara continues and asks a question and says, usually... When your matfis bedavar ha'asur, okay, is let's say you say my piece of food should be like a carbon. A carbon nobody can benefit from. So that's a real davar davar hanader. But if if you're saying my food should be like like the days that I didn't eat, it was that davar ha'asur that iser of eating was only on you. It was not something that anybody else can. Everybody else was allowed to eat. So maybe that's not a good dover another enough. A dover another would be something that's everybody is not permitted to eat, like a carbon. But who says you could be matvis on something that was isser that only applied to you and nobody else? That the Bryson teaches you that you could be matvis. If you could say that all my food should be like the day that my father died, even though you were the only one that fasted on the day your father died, that's still considered a dover another, and the nether would be affected. Okay, so we still don't have a answer for the question. A man is has a piece of meat that's heter, but originally it became usr. For example, he has a piece of shlomim. It's right now permitted to eat because it's after the sprinkling of the blood, but the, at one time, this was a whole animal, and it was usr. Is that considered a dover another? And when the person is matvis on it, He's referring to when this piece of meat was originally a davar another when nobody when it was a carbon or kidahashta. He means to be matvis is the way it is right now. And the way it is right now, it is permitted to eat. So we don't know an answer to this question. Amar Ravina, Ravina, and this is the final thing we'll do today. Amar Ravina, Ravina said, Toshima, a man said like this, the chalis ahari. He wants his piece of meat to be like chala. You know what chala is on the dough you give to the coin. Or kutrumasa. Pashit, the word kutruma means, I want my piece of meat to be like truma. Truma is a dover ha'asr. God made it also. Even though a human has to say that it's truma or chala, but, but God put the kedusha on this piece of truma and, and really... It's not also for everybody. It's actually permitted for the coin. So it's not like a carbon. So if you so if you say my piece of food should be like the 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 challah of a haran or like truma mutter, then it's permitted because that's not a dover hanader. That is a dover haaser, and therefore it's not a neder. But ha katrumas lach me toida aser. But if you if you matvis something to be like the breads of a carbon toida, it's asr. Let's just talk about what that means. There's a chomish that says like this, and this is very important uh, to, to know about a toida. A toida is like this. Let's say the Torah says a shlomim. This is the laws of a shlomim, Yishyakrav Lashem. The Torah says right here in the screen, im al toida. Let's say a person had cancer and went into remission, or he went on a cruise ship and went across uh, the Atlantic. So in the time of the base of Migdash, you had to bring a carbon toida, thanking God that you were healed, thanking God you crossed the ocean. So the Torah says, besides bringing an animal, 
the Torah says, you have to bring, along with the, the slaughtering of a carbon toy, you have to bring 40 loaves of bread of different types. These are not breads. These are like matzahs. One of them is a bread. First one, the Torah says, is chalas matzahs, blue loaves, b'shem. You take 10 loaves of, of chalas that were mixed with oil, right? It was kneaded with oil. Then the second type of, of bread is rukike matzahs meshuchem b'shem, a wafer that was, you know, anointed with oil. The third type of loaves was soilus mubechas chalas blue loaves b'shem. Uh, that when it was, when it was a dough, and when it was flour, it was scolded with hot water, mixed with oil, and then you did it like a, and then you fried it when you baked it, and then alchalis lechem chomets yakrev kabane. And also make a, like, you know, regular chalas that you buy for Arab Shabbos. A, lo- a total of 40 loaves of bread. Okay, so imagine a guy who just got cancer, got into remission, besides bringing the carbon toy the animal, he brought a big basket, and in the basket was 40 separate loaves of different types of matzah and bread, okay? What does he do with those 40 loaves? The hikr of mimena echad mi kol karbam tru malashem, la koyin azarik is dama shlom la You give one to the koyin. The koyin will take one loaf of each type of bread. So a koyin will get four. And you ha- keep the nine, and then you get the meat back from the carbon, and you're supposed to have a party and celebrate the the, the carbon toida with your friends in Yerushalayim. That is the mitta. Now, the point over here is that let's let's examine a toida. A toida, when it was lachme toida, before the sprinkling of the blood, and before you brought the carbon, these breads are usher. You're not allowed to benefit from those breads. After the the carbon was brought on the mezbeach, and then you separate and give the bread to the kohen, then it's permitted. So here is a case that if I said my piece of meat should be like a lachme toda, it's permitted. That's what the brisa seems to imply. That if I said my piece of meat should be like a lachme toda, I look at the lachme toda when it is a lachme toda, when actually given, when, it, when is it given to the kayin after he finished his job of slaughtering your animal and bring it up on the mezbeah. Then you give him the piece of the, the his present, a piece of the of each of those breads. So, so we see that you look at when you matfist on something like that, you say it's permitted because you look at it the way it is right now. And so therefore, you don't look at the lachmi toida where it wants usher. Therefore, it's an effective nether. No, you look at it as if he said, my lach, my piece of meat should be like a lachmi toida after separation, after it's given to the coin, where the coin could eat it. So that's not considered a nether. So that's the Gemara's question. The Gemara says, no. It's the opposite. How Kutrumis Lachme Toide is usher. That means if you go always look at it the way it was before it got separated. Even though a Lachme Toide, after you give it to the coin, it's permitted, but the source of where Lachme Toide comes from would make, would is usher. So if a matvis in a Lachme Toide, it becomes usher. That's a good neda. That's the Gemara's question. When do you give it to the coin? Is after you sprinkle the blood. So therefore, it should be it should be permitted. And since the Bryce says, since the Bryce implies that it's usher, so we see from there that you always go after the source where it comes from, not where it is today. And says the Gemara, Ema, you got to say Ketrumas Lalishka Oscar. That means Trumas Lachme Toda would be always permitted. That means you, it's Kedahashta. You always say, you look at it where it's now, and therefore that's not considered matvis bedover another. It's right now, lach mitoida is generally permitted for the kayin. When is a type of truma that's not, that always remains aser, is referring to truma salishka, means the coins that they would give to the to, to the half a shekel that they give to the base of Migdash to buy, car, to buy carbonus, those coins always remain kadosh. They never lose their... Kedusha to it. You have to buy carbonates with those coins. So those coins always remain usher. Uh, and therefore, if you mat this, that my piece of meat should be like Truma Salishka coins, then it's usher. So, so the Gemara says, asks back, 
Aval Trumas Lachmi Toida my mutter. Would you say that Trumas Lachmi Toida would be mutter if your matvis and Trumas Lachmi Toida would be mutter? Listen, let the Bryce say Lachmi Toida the Kolshke in Trumasa. Why don't the Bryce say clear, clearly out that if your matvis and Lachmi Toida, uh, which at one time was Osir, which at one time was Osir, is it's not a nether because you look at it the way it is now. And certainly if you mat this in regular truma, which was always permitted to give the coin to eat, is a not a, it's not a nether. Why does the Brysage only say Ukutrumasai when you mat this in Kutrumasai, then it's mutter. It should say even if you mat this in Lachme Toida, it's mutter. And says the Gemara, Hokamashmalam, Trumas Lachme Toida, Trumasahi. That's what the Brysa means. Trumasai means any type of truma. Whether it's trumas dogon, whether it's lachme toida, any type of truma given to the kohen is we look at it the way it is right now, and the kohen could eat it. Therefore, it's not considered a nether. That's exactly what the brisa means. The ibai is saying, if you want, I can tell you that sometimes if you matvis but trumas lachme toida, it will not be. It would be a good nether because sometimes lachme toida, even after it was given to the kohen, the kohen can't eat it. When is that case? When can a kohen receive lachme toida and not eat it? The Gemara is going to say right now that if you gave it to the Koyim before they were marker of the Toid on the Mizbeach, while it was still a dough, you gave it to the Koyim, Koyim can't eat it yet because as long as, it, uh, as the Toid wasn't marker, the Koyim is not permitted to eat it. So even if your Matfis, when the Lachme Toid is not permitted to be eaten, then the Nether would be effective. The Ibar is saying, and that's what the Gemara says. Trumas lachme toida name koidim zikas domen who the the bread of lachme toida is also talking about before you sprinkle the blood. How do you give the lachme toida to the koyim before the carbon toida was brought on the mizbeach? You giving him, you paying him before he he did anything. The going the afreshinu belisha while you were kneading the dough, you gave the koyim his 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 piece of the lachme toida. Yeha like the following case. Domer after we bakis now. Meshmuel. Lachme Toida. Shmuel said, the breads of Toida, Sha'afon Ba'arbachalis Yotza. If you bake them in four big breads, instead of breaking 40 breads, 10 of each, you bake them in four big breads, Yotza works. So the Gemara asks the question, but doesn't the Torah imply you should make them into 10 each, 40 loaves in total? The mitzvah. That's a mitzvah. But if you didn't do it that way, if you just bake them all into one big loaf of, of, of matzah and bread, that's fine. You have to give truma to the. You have to give a piece to the kain. If it's four big breads, what are you giving to the kain? The key time of the shaka chada rif kula. You gave the kain one of the four loaves. You gave him, let's say, the, one of the chalas matzis blue lois bashemen, big bread to the kain. But that's not true. You have to give him a piece from all four types. Well, tonight we learned in the Mishnah echa mikol karben shalayita mikarben malchavera. You can't take from one to the other. You have to give him a piece of every type of 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 bread that was part of this of the lachme toida, so you can't give one one bread of one type to the kohen. The chi teima the shakal prusim kol chad v'chad. Maybe you took a piece of each of those big loaves of bread. You took a piece of this one, a piece of this type, of this piece of this type, and a piece of that type. But now we learned in the mishnah echem shloita prusim. You're not allowed to give him a piece of a bread. You have to even give him a whole piece, a whole bread. Ella, it, what what Rashmuel is talking about, that means like this: the Afrishinu Belisha, you gave it to him while you were needing it. In other words, you needed ten loaves of each type of of challah, uh, ten loaves of each type of bread, right? Different types of bread, ten loaves of each, and they're in their dough form. And you gave one to the coin as a piece of dough, so he has a whole piece of dough that was a complete piece. Then you mix the nine together into making one piece of bread and then you bake it. So that's what he said. The shokal chada mechomets v'chada menachalas. You took one from the chomets bread and v'chada menachalas and one from the other type, from the second type of bread. V'chada menachikim, you took another whole dough from the rikikim type. V'chada menachalas and from the other type of bread. And then you gave him one dough from each. And basically you're giving to the koyim prior to, prior to what? Prior to him, him doing the carbon taida. Well, when he gets that piece of dough, he can't eat it, that piece of dough. So that piece of dough, lachme uh, toida, is also for the kohen. So if I'm matvis, if I say, my piece of meat should be like that lachme toida, that's a good nether. Because just like the kohen can't eat that lachme toida, so therefore I'm saying my piece of meat is something that cannot be eaten. 
So again, the Gemara leaves this unresolved, the question of Ikra Kamatvis or Bahashta Kamatvis, and we'll deal with it. We'll repeat it again tomorrow. Bezer Shem.